Let me continue again uh, with uh, Pile Foundation and uh, we have discussed uh, enough on Pile Foundation and so far I have not taken any problem. So, let us uh, see uh, a few problems which is related to only uh, capacity estimation of single pile and as I have mentioned uh, or while uh, doing that I have taken uh, the problem uh, separately pile single pile driven in cohesive soil single pile driven in uh, cohesionless soil. So, I will take uh, uh, three problems in fact and try to see uh, they are quite simple actually and uh, uh, I hope uh, it will be clear because I have shown uh, in the uh, form of e equation now how to apply them. So, let me see uh, two three problems now. Uh, first problem is actually you can see here a 400 millimeter diameter concrete pile is to be driven into a clay soil and property of the soil are unconfined compressive strength q u is 120 kilo Newton per meter square unit weight gamma equal to 19.8 kilo Newton per meter cube and piles design capacity is 350 kilo Newton determine the piles required length if the factor of safety is 2. Okay. So, two three things actually there uh, when this is a pile driven in cohesive soil and when the pile driven in cohesive soil and we know that uh, that uh, the formula uh, that is uh, capacity will be coming total capacity will be coming from the frictional resistance and the base resistance and frictional resistance comes from the actually cohesion of the clay soil and here you can see the cohesion is not given. Okay. So, how to find out the cohesion instead of the soil un unconfined compressive strength is given and so in soil mechanics you have learned that if the unconfined compression strength is known then we can determine the value of cohesion of the soil is just half of that. That means, C value of the soil is C value of the soil is just nothing but q u by 2 that means, 120 by 2 that means, 60 kilo Newton per meter square. And you can see that the design capacity is given we generally initially whatever formula we derive for capacity we first will get q ultimate is it not. So, here actually design value is there. So, q design is given 350. So, q ultimate will be actually generally for single pile we use factor safety 2. So, it will be 350 multiplied by 2 that means, 700. Now, based on soil property and length of the pile and length and dimension of the pile uh, or dimension of the pile we have to theoretically find out the q ultimate and it has to be equated with q ultimate and then we can find out the unknown that is unknown length. So, let me see uh, in the next page let me go. So, you are actually q ultimate will be coming from q s plus q t and q s will be equal to uh, alpha c a s okay. and alpha is not given I can assume 1 here. So, if it is 1 multiplied by c is actually 60 multiplied by a s pi times d, d is actually how much 0 0.4 and L, A surface is what if the pile is something like this. So, pi d times the length is the pi uh, uh, A s, so multiplied by suppose L and your q t will be equal to uh, uh, your q t multiplied by A t and q t how to find out? that is nothing but uh, C and C that is nothing but C and C 
and uh, so directly I will put the value C is actually 60 and N C for the single pile actually your uh, uh, for deep foundation actually your N C value uh, for cohesive soil normally in bearing capacity problem of shallow foundation we have taken 5.1 and I have mentioned that when you consider deep foundation then your N C value is 9. So, it is 9 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.4 square by pi d square by 4. So, this is actually your Q t. So, that means, you will be having 60 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.4 multiplied by L plus 60 multiplied by 9 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.4 square divided by 4 that is nothing but 700 Q ultimate is not. Sixty pi point four into L and sixty nine pi d square by four. So if you do that, then you will see L will be coming out actually eight point three four meter. Suppose uh, in this problem, uh, I have taken alpha value is one, and if I take suppose alpha value something different, because of if it is a steep soil, then alpha value will be reduced less than one if I take suppose 0.7 then if I multi here actually alpha value suppose if I take as 0 0.7 which is taken as uh, 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 1. So, it will be actually you can see that will be uh, 700 minus uh, 60 multiplied by 9 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.4 multiplied by 0.4 divided by 4. So, uh, divided by 60 divided by pi divided by 0.4 oh sorry uh, 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 divided by further 0.7 suppose then it will be if I take alpha equal to 0.7 say alpha equal to 1 that is the value and L equal to 11.977 or suppose 12 meter when alpha equal to 0.7. So, this is actually the your freedom uh, not freedom actually depending on soil type you have to assume that. So, this is one very simple application uh, let me go to the next problem. Uh, so, next problem also similar uh, the pile is uh, driven in again clay soil instead of L is unknown now I am giving you L and you have to find out the design capacity of the pile. You can see here uh, that a 300 millimeter diameter and 15 meter long pile is driven in a uh, normally consolidated clay deposit of great depth that means the soil uh, up to sufficient depth uh, beyond 15 meter also same soil so that I can use the value of uh, property of that layer. So, estimate the shape load assuming shape load means design load or allowable load C is 100 and adhesion factor actually alpha 0.8 and a factor of safety of 2. Okay. So, again same thing Q ultimate will be equal to Q s plus Q t and Q s will be actually you can see adhesion factor will be alpha uh, alpha times C multiplied by A s plus Q t actually C n C and it will be uh, A t. So, here if I put the values alpha is 0 0.8 multiplied by 100 multiplied by pi multiplied by d is 0 0.3 multiplied by L is 15 plus C is actually 60 N C C N C N C actually 9, 9 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0 0.3 square by 4. So, if I calculate this, uh, this value will come, this will come actually Q S come 11 1130.97 plus this comes 63.61. So, 
So, total comes actually your 1194, 1194.58 kilo Newton. So, ultimate capacity of the uh, of the pile 15 meter long and 3 millimeter uh, 300 millimeter diameter pile when driven in a clay soil whose cohesion value is 600 then your ultimate capacity is around 1200. So, you can approximately take as 1200 actually 1200 kilometers. So, Q allowable or Q allowable or Q design or Q shape which will be equal to Q ultimate divided by factor of safety and if I take 2 then it will be 1194.558 divided by 2. So, it will be uh, so it will be uh, your 597 kilo Newton. So, approximately 600 kilo Newton also can be taken because already we have factor of safety. So, 597 otherwise are more specific, but approximately it can be taken 600 also. So, this is the second problem and uh, of course, it is quite simple. Now, I will go to the third problem. Okay. So, third problem actually you can see here the pile driven in um, uh, pile, uh, pile driven in sandy soil and you can see that a, a 0.5 meter diameter steel pile is driven into dense sand. The pile is driven with the tip closed by a flat plate. Okay. That means, it is a hollow actually uh, bottom is closed initially while driving and the closed end uh, steel pile is uh, filled with that is pipe pile actually closed end the closed end steel pipe pile steel pipe pile is filled with concrete after driving the embedded length of the pile is 20 meter and water table is at 4 meter depth from ground surface. The soil unit weight is 20, phi is 367 degrees and K is the that means lateral pressure coefficient 0 0.9 and tan delta that means friction between the surface and the soil is 0.4 that determine the design capacity of the pile using a factor of safety of 2. What actually you have to do 20 meter pile is there. So, this is 20 meter and actually uh, this is the 120 meter at 4 meter depth water table is there. Okay. And then uh, uh, so it is a sandy soil and uh, dense soil like sand uh, soil actually driven to a dense sand and for this actually when, when the pile is driven in the sand then the friction depends on lateral pressure actually. A uh, lateral pressure depends on vertical pressure. So, at any point I can find out vertical pressure then multiply by lateral lat pressure coefficient then you will get the horizontal pressure then multiply it by the frictional coefficient then you will get the friction and since sandy soil the vertical pressure is varying. So, friction also will be varying. So, that is the because of that you have to draw the pressure diagram first and then find out the pressure diagram area from there you can get the uh, total capacity frictional capacity. And while drawing this diagram already I have shown that that this though this vertical pressure linearly increasing. So, lateral pressure also supposed to be linearly increase increase uh, can increase, but for the calculation purpose we have seen that if you do that then there will be overestimation. So, it has to be that distribution will be restricted at a depth of equal to critical depth and that critical depth is nothing but uh, uh, generally is given some recommendation 10 times diameter to 20 times diameter whereas, actually soft soil loose soil 10, 10, 10 times diameter and then then send it to 20 times diameter. So, here actually the our problem is uh, actually dense soil. So, I will take critical depth as 20 times of the diameter. So, that means 20 times of the diameter of the pile that means 20 multiplied by 0.5 actually 10 meters. So, this is the initial things actually you have to decide and then you have to go for the calculation. So, let me see the calculation in the next slide. You can see here that uh, this is up to this actually 10 meters. So, D C your D C will be equal to 20 multiplied by 0 0.5 actually 10 meter. So, this is the D C and up to D C 
your art pressure or lateral pressure diagram will not be linear because water table is here. So, above that actually your unit weight of the soil is 20.5. So, full unit weight will you can calculate use up to this and from here actually when you will go you have to use submerged unit weight for calculating the lateral pressure. So, if I do that then this point actually your value will be uh, 20.5 multiplied by 4 that is 82 and when I will come here then this 80 this will be 82 plus this will be 82 plus uh, your gamma is 20.5 and taking unit weight of water as 10 multiplied by 6. So, these two together will come actually 145. Okay. So, uh, uh, the easiest way to find out actually when you will draw the vertical this is uh, this is the vertical pressure diagram and if you find out the vertical pressure diagram and then you multiply by the lateral art pressure coefficient. Okay, then you are getting lateral pressure diagram or lateral force. Then if you multiply the frictional coefficient then you will get the friction along a line friction along the line what how much frictional load and if you want to find out the wall around the surface then you have to multiply the by a pi times d. So, that is the concept I will be using first I will try to find out the the uh, uh, Qs that means uh, along a line along a, along the pile is a circular pile suppose and if this is a circular pile suppose along this line how much the frictional force I will try to find out that I suppose denote by small q s. So, that means it will be the area of this diagram multiplied by k multiplied by tan delta. So, that I find so how to find out this diagram I can divide into three parts 1, 2 and 3. So, first part actually half multiplied by 82 multiplied by 4 plus second part actually half trapezoidal area actually it is 82 plus 145 this plus this multiplied by half multiplied by height actually 6 this is the area of trapezium plus this area area of this uh, rectangle that will be actually 10 multiplied by 145. So, you will get this value equal to uh, this value will be equal to I can find out anyway. So, you can see that uh, 4 multiplied by 82 oh sorry 4 multiplied by 82 multiplied by 0.5 this is 164 plus this one 82 plus 145 this one multi, uh, uh, multiplied by 0 0.5 multiplied by 6 this is actually 681 plus this is actually 10 multiplied by 145 that become 1450. So, this together will be equal to 1450 plus 681 plus 164 that is actually 2295. So, that means Q s actually along this line. So, Q s will be equal to pi d times Q s. So, it will be 2295 multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.5. So, that will be equal to multiplied by pi multiplied by 0 0.5. So, that gives you 3605. Oh, sorry, uh, I have not multiplied here another thing. Uh, 
uh, this is actually q to get the q s you have to multiply by k tan delta. So, this multiplied by k is 0 0.9 and tan delta is 0 0.4. So, this will be equal to 164 plus 681 plus 1450 this multiplied by 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.4 that become 826.2. So, 164 plus 681 plus 1450 multiplied by 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.4 this become your 826 this become 826 and if I multiply by pi d. So, multiplied by pi multiplied by 0 0.5. So, that become 1297. So, this value become 1297 1297 kilometer. So, q s because of friction you have got a load of uh, 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 1297 whereas, your q t q 2 will be sigma v dash multiplied by a t and sigma v dash actually here is nothing but 145. So, 145 uh, um, uh, oh no sorry not sigma v. So, this is q t multiplied by a t and q t will be equal to sigma v dash prime multiplied by n q star. Okay. So, if I do that sigma v dash actually this is actually nothing but 145 and n q star for particular phi is given is suppose 90. So, your q t become 145 multiplied by 90. So, it will be 145 multiplied by 90. So, 130 130 5 0. So, then your q t will become pi multiplied by 0 0.5 square by 4 multiplied by 130 0 0 5 0. So, that become uh, you can see uh, 0 0.5 square multiplied by pi divided by 4 multiplied by 130 0 0 0. So, that gives you of 2562 this is 2562 kilo Newton. Okay. So, now that means your total Q Q ultimate will be equal to 2562 plus your here it was 1297 1297. So, that gives you 2562 plus 1297 that become 3859 3859 kilo Newton. So, that means if you now find out want to find out Q allowable that means Q allowable will be equal to Q ultimate divided by 2. So, if you would do that then divided by 2. So, it become 1929. So, 19 approximately you can say 3 0 kilo Newton. Okay. So, this is actually uh, the third problem and if there is no. So, here actually I have taken comparatively uh, little difficult problem suppose I have taken water table and if it is a completely dry then you could have got one line okay. then the, the diagram could have been you know, two parts, but I have taken water table because I have to wanted to see all complexity in this calculation. So, you can see uh, it has pressure diagram varied from here to here, then varied to here to here, then you have divided in three parts. So, first I have calculated uh, skin friction resistance because of the skin friction and then I have calculated uh, base resistance. Base resistance Q T actually equal to bearing capacity of the T multiplied by your base area and then Q T actually how to find out? Q t is nothing but sigma v dash prime into n q star. Sigma v dash prime is what? Whatever 
uh, pressure actually at the base of the pile and what are the base of the pressure of the base of the pile this at whatever pressure is the critical depth same pressure will be there at the crit at the base of the pile same thing I have taken. So, that is 145 I have taken and n q star corresponding to phi equal to given value is 90. So, that means q t is obtained this and once you get q small q t then capital q t that means uh, total base resistance will be equal to pi a t into q t. So, pi d square by 4 multiplied by the so it will be 2562 kilo newton is the q t. So, q ultimate will be q s plus q t this is q t and this is q s and these two together become 3859 as q ultimate and then if you know the q ultimate then q allowable will be just nothing but divided by the divided by the factor of safety which is generally we consider as 2. So, we have taken 2. So, ultimately your capacity become 1930 kilo newton. So, that means you can see that that when the pile driven granular soil both base resistance is quite significant skin resistance also quite significant and as a result your total capacity will be quite high compared to the capacity of the friction pile or pile driven in cohesive soil. So, these are the things also one can remember. So, uh, perhaps uh, 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 with this uh, better to stop today and I will take uh, uh, some other application like uh, uh, group capacity, group efficiency I have discussed further discussion as I have mentioned that when the pile group uh, pile is spaced, spaced in very closely then sometime pile instead of failing individually it may fail as a whole as a block. How to find out the capacity of the block and then finally, how to arrive at the design capacity for us all those things I will discuss in the next uh, few classes. Okay. Thank you.